Finally, Donna Summer's name was up in lights. You could say that with the support of a record company, she had her cake and could eat it too. We had made up a cake, which was the back of the album cover, um, which is Donna lying in his negligee, you know, doing her thing. And um, we made it up here in Los Angeles because no one did that in New York, this uh, cake sculpting kind of thing. And uh, shipped it, uh, took up, I think it was two first class seats on the way, <laughs> on the way to, um, to New York and got put in a refrigerated ambulance car and sent to the disco and uh, you know, it was revealed. Live a lie, I can't do it. I can't live this sex queen thing out. I just can't, it's not me. Donna Summer was caught up in the whirlwind of show business success. World celebrity was, was kind, of, kind of an adjustment, I'd say. I had a, almost had a nervous breakdown from it. It was really an exciting time. It was like being on a roller coaster that never took a pit stop. I, I was just stressed out completely by the whole thing. I thought that nobody was treating me like a human being. They were all treating me differently. People rush you. And I mean, they just, they would rush her, you know? And it was, it was pretty amazing for me to say, this is just Donna, do you think you, this is just my sister? While she was swept up in her newly found fame and fortune, the public couldn't get enough of her recordings. It was great, I think, for a little while. But I think what ended up happening is, is that, like, when you become famous, you don't realize what you give up. And I can remember her really agonizing at times because she would want to take the kids to the park, and she couldn't take them to the park. So now when I was famous, I had to be aware that maybe somebody is following me. Maybe um, I have to be careful uh, of going in an elevator alone. After the success of her debut album, Many critics thought Donna would fade away as just another disco flash in the pan. I never thought she'd uh, top Love to Love You Baby. I, mean, I thought that was like, again, a great gimmick and, it would, and she'd be a one-shot artist that would come and go quickly. Uh, I just thought that that's, it's too much of a novelty sound. It was too much, uh, too unique an idea. But luckily, she didn't stick to that idea. That was just the springboard. Other people had high hopes for her. Donna didn't know how much talent was left inside of her, but she wasn't afraid to find out. the year following her debut album, Donna released two more albums, Trilogy of Love and Four Seasons of Love. Both went gold, and her concerts were standing room only. But she didn't forget about her family. I would say that I did always think that when I became successful, when I achieved that, whatever that level would be, that I would buy my parents a new home. In fact, I think she really, and truly, I think when she got... Uh, famous, I think. Uh, I think she bought me a house before she bought herself one. The last dance. The last dance for love. Yes, it's my last chance. Romance. Tonight. Another year went by and she released two more albums. And incredibly, again, both reached gold status. Also in 1977, her single, Last Dance, for the movie Thank God It's Friday, reached number one on the disco and R&B charts, as well as winning the Academy Award for Best Movie Song of the Year.
she proved she wasn't confined only to disco. She scored a number one hit with her soothing rendition of MacArthur Park. something that no other singing star ever got to do. Ah, oh, today is the day. It's all disco day on American Bandstand. She was a, I want to host American Bandstand. She was the biggest star of the day. And she said, I got to have this. So we made it into a fun experience. I was there, but she is indeed the only one in the history of that show who was a musical artist who hosted American Bandstand. <laughs> 